Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. As you can tell, Gracie is here today. And I thought I would just get on here really quick and um, do my share. I didn't do it last night. I was on the phone with a friend. And so I thought I would do it real quick. I have to go to, well, have the opportunity to go to youth and to work with them and to share the love of Jesus with the younger generation. It's my pleasure. Gracie's taking a nap. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here and um, we are going to be back diving into Psalms with 59 and 60 today. And we will do, I forgot to pray the other night. I'm sorry. Anyway, my name is Charm and this is my ministry, Awesome Treasures Ministry. Not because I am awesome, but because in God's eyes, we are all his awesome treasures. And our true treasures are stored in heaven. This picture that I have behind me, the new Jerusalem, that's where our true treasures are. Our treasures here on earth are fleeting and not lasting. No, she's turned away. She doesn't want to do that. So let's pray and then we will read Psalm 59 and 60. I'm kind of in a little bit of a lull of time that um, Seth is occupied. I may start doing this in the afternoons at this time. Don't know still what's wrong with my YouTube camera. I ordered me a new one. I upgraded the software that I have, and I don't know. Hopefully, I can get a refund because I don't think it's any better. All right, well, let's pray. God, we just praise you and thank you for the all the many things that you do for us, that you are on your throne and you are in control, that you love us no matter what, God, that there is nothing hidden from you. You are amazing and powerful and mighty. And you are, she always leaves during the prayer. And you are um, the great I am and the great Jehovah. There is no God like you. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm. And our strength and our refuge, God. You are um, the great You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truths. You are loving and caring and compassionate and kind. You are trustworthy and faithful. You are forgiving. You are patient. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to return, God. We pray for them to repent and to be reconciled. We just pray, God, for... What are you doing? We just pray, God, for... Um, all the people that have gone through disastrous um, situations lately, the tornadoes that went across five states, God, stayed on the ground for 250 miles, God, and left a path of dest destruction. Many lives were lost, God, and many were injured. Many were spared, God. We just pray for all of these people. We pray for the people that lost loved ones, God. We pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We pray for healing for the injured, and we pray for healing for the people that endured this storm. God, many miraculous stories about how people were praying, and you spared their lives, God. Many testimonies to be shared with others. God, we just pray for all these other things that have been going on, God. 
where lives were lost, senseless tragedies, some man-made tragedies, some some just um, weather tragedies. We just pray that you would be with these people, God, that you would meet their needs, that you would send the hands and feet of Jesus and the love and compassion of Jesus. Please show us where we can help, God, where we can be a helping hand. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We pray that they would feel your presence. We pray for people that are sick right now. We just pray for healing, God, that you would just place your healing hand upon them. I praise you that Seth is feeling better, God. I was having a hard time this week. I just pray that he is so much better. Just give you all the glory, honor, and praise for that. I pray that you would give the family strength as their loved ones have been sick, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Hi, Ashton. How are you? Friend Ashton is here. Did you just get out of school? Are you coming to the Christmas party tonight? Talking to my buddy Ashton. Okay, well, Psalm 59 and 60 is what we're reading tonight. And uh, the assured judgment of the wicked. The chief musician set to do not destroy a Mitchum of David when Saul sent men and they watched the house in order to kill him. So Saul sent, um, yeah, be excited about it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be lots of fun. I am too. I thought I would get on here because I can't get on here at my usual time. All right. Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. For look, they lie in wait for my life. The mighty gather against me, not for my transgression nor for my sin. O oh Lord, they run and prepare themselves through no fault of mine. Awake to help me and behold, you therefore, O oh Lord, God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to punish all nations. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressors. At evening they return, they growl like a dog and go all around the city. Indeed, they belch with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for they say, Who hears? But you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in derision. I will wait for you, O, o you, his strength. For God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power and bring them down. O Lord, our shield, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips. Let them even be taken in their pride and for the cursing and lying which they speak. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. And at evening they return. They growl like a dog and go all around the city. They wander up and down for food and howl if they are not satisfied. But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises. For God is my defense, my God of mercy. So again, another psalm of David. David was pursued by his enemies relentlessly. And David was not a perfect man. David was a sinful man, just like we fall into sin from time to time. But David had a repentant heart and he had a humble heart. And he was always crying out to God, saying that God 
was his strength and God is his refuge and that God is his defense and that he is merciful. And that's the same God that we have now. He is the same. He is our strength. He is our refuge. He is our defense. There are enemies out there. We are in a major battle of spiritual warfare between good and evil right now. And you, you feel the oppression. You feel the evil oppression. But Jesus will triumph over all evil. There will be no evil standing when Jesus gets through. So we need to walk with Jesus. We need to walk with God. We need to walk in God's ways. All right. Well, we are just going to go on to Psalm 60. Because like I said, I don't have the luxury of time today. So the next one is urgent prayer for the restored favor of God. And it says, to the chief musician set to Lily of the Testimony, a Mitchum of David, for teaching when he fought against Mesopotamia and Syria of Zobah and Joab, returned and killed 12,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. David was a warrior. He was... He would battle his enemies too. He was a warrior. He was not afraid to fight. Oh God, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. Oh, restore us again. You have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine of confusion. You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be, be displayed because of the truth, that your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of, of Sekoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the helmet for my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom I will cast my shoe. Philistia shout in triumph because of me. Who will bring me to the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God, who cast us off? And you, O oh God, who did not go out with our enemies, give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Useless. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. So again, it's talking about enemies. And it's talking about, David is talking about his enemies. David had so many enemies, as you can tell. All these, all these places were enemies to David. But he knew that God would help him. He knew that help of man is useless. But through God, with God's help, he can do valiantly. So he knew David knew where his help comes from. It comes from God. I was going to see if there was any study part. Okay, this is what it says about 59 that we read a while ago. God is the only source of power and strength for David. The superscription associates this song with a time when King Saul sent men to kill David. David desired deliverance from these destructive enemies who sought his life. The poet also asserted his innocence and declared that he had not rebelled against the Lord or missed God's mark for his life. The song ends on a confident note as the psalmist praises God as his defense and refuge. And then, um, oh, there isn't one for 60. There's one for 61. 
Let's go ahead and read 61, and we'll read that study part, and then we'll do a salvation message, a really short one. Assurance of God's eternal protection to the, mu to the chief musician on a stringed instrument, a psalm of David. This is really short. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me back to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life, his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. So again, another Psalm of David. Um, just crying out to God, but also saying that he is the rock that is higher than he is, and he is the strong tower from the enemy. Just so good. He is his shelter. He will shelter under his wings. All right. So 61, 1 through 8. This is all the study that I have on this. The poet sought safety in God's presence during difficult times. From the end of the earth suggests that the psalmist had reached the end of his rope. In any case, he experienced despair over the apparent absence of God in his life. He longed to be guided to the rock that is higher than him, probably a reference to God himself. Note the change in tone. The psalmist recognized that the safety and security of God's presence he had enjoyed in the past would remain, and thus the psalm ends on a note of gratitude to God. So, you know, David, David was not a perfect man. But God himself said that David was a man after his own heart. I think because David, when he, David would realize that he had strayed away from God, he would call out to God and he would try to get back in with God. He would humble himself and ask for forgiveness and cry out to God, who is his shelter, his deliverer, his refuge, his strength. But God is the same. The God of the days of David is the same God that we have today. He is our strength. He is our shelter. He is our refuge. He is our shelter in the storm. He is our creator, our protector, our provider, um, our strength and our refuge. Again, he is our fortress. He is all that and so much more. And he loves us above all things. He loves us. He loves who he created with everything that he has. And so I'm going to do a really short salvation message because I need to go and uh, get Seth, get him changed. I don't know whether he's going with me tonight or not, but I need to get him dressed if he is. All right. So do you know the ABCs of life? God created you to experience a full life here on earth, John 10, 10. And he wants you to spend eternity with him, 2 Peter 3, 9. To become a Christian, you simply need to, one, admit. Admit you need a Savior. We've all disobeyed God. We have sinned and earned separation from God, which is death, Romans 3.23 and 6.23. No matter how good you are and how hard you try, you cannot work your way into heaven. Ephesians 2.8-9, it is a gift. It is a free gift. Salvation is a free gift that came through a great price, through Jesus. 
believe in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. And then three, commit. Commit your life to Christ. You can believe in your mind that Jesus exists, but to have a relationship with him, you must ask him to be your Lord here on earth and your Savior eternally. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is the prayer. Admit, believe, commit three things. This is the prayer. You don't have to say this prayer. You can say your own prayer, but this is just a guideline for you, and it's very short. So repeat after me. If you would like to be saved, if you would like to have Jesus as your Savior, but all the things that are going on right now, Jesus is the only answer, and I'm going to read to you what I wrote on Facebook. I nearly forgot. Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven. I trust you alone for eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer and you invited Jesus to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his Son. If you want to grow closer and you want to grow closer to God in a relationship, and read his word every day and pray and find music to praise. It's a perfect lead in for this. Okay, so periodically or uh, not a whole lot lately, I share songs on Facebook, songs that mean something to me, songs that I've heard that I want to share. So today I shared the new song by Cain called Wonderful. It's a Christmas song. So there are so many beautiful new Christmas songs and messages this year like this one by Cain. Can we make this season wonderful? That's part of the lyrics. He is our wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. I love these lyrics that remind us who Jesus is and why he came. Jesus is the reason for this season. Don't shut him out. He would never shut us out. He is always patiently waiting for us to come to him or return to him. Ten days away, I want to focus on these beautiful songs. I have gotten over the fact that it is Christmas again. Wow, this year has just blown by. I mean, it has gone so fast. I can't believe it's Christmas again. After this year and last year, all going on daily, that is just wrong and senseless. We need a reminder that Jesus has and will someday defeat all evil. Until that moment, we have a Savior that is the answer to all that we see and experience that is wrong in this world. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. Even if you have strayed away, come back to God. Repent. Return, repent. Be reconciled. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Come just as you are. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask for forgiveness. Believe that Jesus 
is God's one and only Son that came to save the world through his death, burial, and resurrection. Confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite him into your heart. Leave the old, receive the new. So we can all start over. Today is a new day. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. God brings us new mercies and blessings every day. Every day we can start over. Yesterday might have been a horrible day for you. You might have sinned terribly yesterday. Don't let yesterday define your, define your today. Start your day new. Start your day with Jesus. Okay. Well, I'm going to pray and I'm going to get off of here. God, we just praise you and thank you for this time that we can learn more about your word, that we can learn more about King David and who he was, God, and who you still are, God. You are still that God that David was talking about. You have not changed, God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, just like Jesus. Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever. God, help us. Give us the boldness to share your truths and to share the gospel with others. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for my encounter today as I went and got my oil changed. And the two men that I met that I visited with, God, about the miraculous things that you've done in our lives and the way that you saved Seth from sickness, God, and that he is still he is still healed by the blood of Jesus. And God, we just thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to testify and to encourage God. And to share, to share your goodness, God. I just pray for all of my friends and all of my family, God. I pray for abundant blessings, protection and provision, God. I pray for anyone that comes here, God. That maybe this word that I read today was exactly what they needed. They needed to see that the enemies don't define them. That it's your strength that will carry them through, God. Thank you for this time. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors, I'm going to leave you with a blessing. From God in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I'm going to pray for a lot of peace this Christmas. I pray for contentment in what people don't have. That they will be content and grateful and thankful for what they do have. I pray for these people that have been through such disastrous things lately and events. That they would feel the presence of God that their needs would be met by the hands and feet of Jesus, the love and compassion of Jesus. I just I pray those things too. I left those out. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, have an awesome rest of your afternoon and evening. I am off to youth. Ashton and I are going to go celebrate Christmas at our youth Christmas party. It's going to be fun. And we're going to decorate some cookies and do some different things, sing some Christmas carols, read the Christmas story, which is about Jesus. Jesus is the reason for this season. So don't shut him out. He is the reason. He is the reason that we celebrate Christmas. He is the best gift of all. So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good afternoon and good night. <laughs>